And Chris Boyd, well, you know what he can do. Chris Boyd, the goal machine for Rangers. Lovely and great Chris Boyd scores. Chris Boyd delivers one score for Scotland. Goal scorer extraordinaire Chris Boyd joins Michael Stewart and myself in the studio this evening. Well, that was eventful to uh, say the least. It was supposed to be uh, Hearts assistant manager Billy Brown's uh, last match as assistant manager. It turns out, news today, that he will now be staying on till the end of the month. Uh, chaos on the pitch, pretty much, Michael, yesterday. Is it chaos off the field at Tynecastle as well? Well, there's a lot of mixed messages coming out. Um, you know, obviously they released a statement saying that uh, you know Billy was leaving after the St Johnston game, and now it seems as if he's staying on till the end of the month. I think what that highlights is the fact that there's too many chiefs and not enough Indians at the club at the moment. You've got the administrators, you've got the managing director, you've got a director of football, you've got the potential f uh, foundation hearts coming in. The sooner it gets resolved, the better. So there's a bit of leadership in there, and they're actually moving forward rather than at the moment it's a bit of a mess. It was a busy afternoon for the referee, Brian Colvin, say the least yesterday, Chris. You've seen plenty of clear goal-scoring opportunities yourself in your career. Was this a clear goal-scoring opportunity? No, I don't think so. You know, he's going away from goal, and I think Fraser Wright maybe getting back in as well. Um, with the way he's took his first touch round about. Could uh, Fraser Wright catch and... him? I don't know. You know, he's, he's definitely, he definitely would have had a chance, but I don't think it's a, a red card from where it is in the pitch. Michael? Oh, definitely. Definitely not. You know, it's, it was so far out. You know, we're talking about forty odd yards. I think it was, a, you know, it was a harsh decision to, to brandish a red card, especially with it being so early in the game as well. I don't think there was any great malice in the tackle. So overall, I think it was probably a bit harsh. It was a busy day, as I said, for referee Brian Colvin. Let's have a look at a few other of the key decisions, uh, Michael. It was never a penalty, was it? No, it certainly wasn't. It. I mean, at best, there was maybe a wee shot, a shirt tug, which you know clearly would have been outside the, the box. But you know, there, you know, there's a good argument there that it's not even a foul, full stop. But if it was, it was outside the box, so there was never any danger of that being a, a penalty. And it's uh, you know, it's again, it's another one for Hearts. They've, they've had a few this season, and this one's another one of harsh decisions. Uh, you know, penalties. I remember Jimmy Hamill getting smacked in the face with the ball, and they got a penalty coming <laughs> against them. I think that one's another one that's, that's harsh against Hearts. They made for a great day for Stevie May, Chris. Yeah, two great penalties there, and uh, he's obviously scrambled the other one over the line <laughs> yeah. as well, as, as all good strikers do. Um, you know, he's he's, um, he's he's definitely got himself amongst the goals this season. And it was a pretty chaotic game overall. In the end, it will. <laughs> Chaos, I think, is the only word that really comes to mind Stramash. to sum up, Michael. Yeah, of course, Stramash, <laughs> that's the one. Here yeah, we go. Yeah. Um, you know, give credit to Hearts. It's, you know, it's a difficult season. Um, you know, that can really play on the, the, my, uh, the players' minds and, and drag them down. But it's, you've got to show a little bit of spirit to, to try and fight back. And, uh, you know, this was well and truly, as I said, a Stramash in the, in the goal mouth. Did the referee get this right? Sending off Alan Manis and Ryan Stevenson, Chris. I mean, when you look at, obviously their hands are raised, but you know, I, I think it's easy to say whose hands are not raised there. Um, it's pretty incredible. It's, there's no. I think with the time it is as well, you know, it's 90 minutes in the clock as well to send it to them off. I think it's 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 not the best decision. Yeah. Oh, it was an incredible game, Michael. Oh, it was. You know, and, and this is a you know a good header for Danny Wilson, but. For me, if there's somebody on the post there, they head it away. You know, I'm a, you know, I'm a huge advocate of getting two guys on the posts and, and clearing it. And, and uh, you know, if St Johnson had that, they would, have, they would have taken three points yesterday. Yeah, and a courageous point in the end, you'd have to say, from hearts, Chris. Yeah, they've battled back. You know, it's, it's happened to them a few times this season where they've lost leads um, late in game. But, you know, they've, they've, they've fought all the way um, and, and managed to get, which is a, is a great point for them, um, especially being 3-1 down. Yeah, plenty of entertainment. Well, Chris Boy, the SPL's all-time record goal scorer. You've scored a few belters in your time, Chris. Uh, this strike from Philippe Kess, it takes some beating, doesn't it? Yeah, it was, it was an unbelievable strike. You know, he gets it out his, his feet quick and, and gets it away. Um, you know, goalkeeper might be a wee bit off his line, but it's still I mean, it's an unbelievable finish. Are you surprised that Ross County have been able to get a player of his quality? Well, when you look back to last season, he was playing most weeks in the Championship for, for mm -hmm. Cardiff, and you know it's, it's a great signing for for um, Inverness. And it's yeah, a great Ross one. The Ross County find themselves on Michael in 2014. Is it just a case of new signings making all the difference? Well, they've certainly lifted the the, the team. Uh, you know, we see here all, all the the goals that have led to some great results. Philip Kiss there with another one uh, since the turn of the year, like you were saying. And you know, I think that it's a highlight of the fact that you know with the playoffs this year in the in the Premiership. A lot of the teams down the bottom of the league have been active in the transfer market, and obviously it was great to see these guys coming in. And it's you know a, a big plus with the playoffs. Had that not been there, we probably wouldn't have seen a lot of these guys coming in. Were they sorely lacking quality? Would you say for the first half of the season? <sighs> 
you know, the thing about Ross County is they've had a settled team for such a long time, a number of years, and in the summer there was a big turnaround in players, probably the biggest they've had in four or five years, and I think that's the problem. It's taken time to settle in. With that extra quality that's coming in January, of course, that's lifted the, the team as a whole. You're with Kilmarnock, Chris, of course. Do you see yourselves scrapping with the likes of Ross County? That playoff place is obviously uh, going to be a factor this season. Yeah, I mean, I think the four that's there now are going to be, you know, it's going to be like that all the way um, from now to the end of the season. But, you know, we need to look in the positives and, and, and hopefully we, we can, um, you know, stay at the top of that um, in the Liga 4. But, you know, it's going to be difficult. OK, St Mirren have been tipped by more than a few to play a part in the playoff place scramble. The Paisley side were away to Hibs yesterday at Easter Road. Commentary comes from John Barnes. Yeah, and handball's a real feature of tonight's <laughs> show, Michael. Adam Campbell really getting away with it right at the end there. And it could have been a big point for, for Hibernian. Yeah, of course it would have been a great comeback for them. And, you know, it's another one that the referees have uh, not got right. You see here we've highlighted the fact he's got an unobstructed view of that there. Yeah. That's a handball, it's a penalty. I think it's unintentional. I don't think, you know, he turns his back, he doesn't know where the ball is, he's trying to get his arm across the, the Hibs player, Harris, there. But it hits his arm, it deviates, you know, a, a big deviation. And, uh, you know, as we saw, the referee's got a clear view of it. And, it, you know, that should have been a penalty for Hibs. Yeah, apart from that, uh, Adam Campbell had a, a good game, you'd have to say, Chris. And St Martin had a great first half as well. And, and Campbell at the centre of a lot of the good things. Yeah, it shows a great pace to get down the thing and a good ball back. I think the, the Hibs defence, you know, I'm a bit disappointed. Um, but, you know, he's, he's done well from where he is there to, to get inside the, the six-yard box and, and, and get a finish. Um, you know, but I'll go back to it again. I think Hibs should have squeezed the game, um, squeezed the ball a lot faster than what they did in the goal when they wouldn't have been able to yeah, get in the position to, to get such an easy finish. Yeah, Michael Campbell's come on loan from Newcastle United. He's not the first to uh, have treaded that path from Newcastle to St Mirren. It's obviously paying dividends for the Paisley club. Yeah, obviously Conor Newton's uh, been at the club for a while now and done very well. And Campbell comes in on his debut against Hibs there and he's, you know, he's clearly had a, a big impact on the game and uh, you know, caused the fullbacks chaos all day. Yeah. Terry Butcher described it as probably the most wretched 45 minutes he's ever had from one of his sides, Chris. Um, you wouldn't really want to be in the Hibs uh, training ground tomorrow, would you? <laughs> Definitely not, but I, th I think it shows how far Hibs have came in the last couple of months when, you know, they're disappointed. Um, you know, I think the, the big the big thing is they've lost a, a game at home um, that we'd have expected to win with the run they've been on. Um, you know, that's a big disappointment for them, but, you know, I wouldn't like to be going to that training ground tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And Michael, in terms of St Mirren, how Jekyll and Hyde are they? Massively, you know, they're, they are a real hot and cold team. They, they go on, you know, streaks where they'll, they'll they'll get some good form. Unfortunately, though, the the cold streaks and the the bad runs are they, they get quite, you know, they're quite long. And the problem is that uh, you know every time that there's a bad run, there's a bit of you know apathy from the fans. And um, you know, obviously, a good result there on Saturday. And um, you know, Daniel and I'll be looking to try and make sure that that's a, a good run for them now. Absolutely. Well, we'd see the end of at least one impressive winning streak this weekend after their week in Turkey. Celtic were back in league action, looking for their 10th straight Premiership win in a row. They faced the Motherwell side, looking for their 7th straight league win. The last time Stuart McCall's side had lost a match, though, it was a 5-0 home defeat to Celtic back in December. Well, Chris Commons, very much kind of the start of the show yesterday, Chris. He's got 19 goals already this season. Is he a dead set for Player of the Year, do you feel? Yeah, I think he is. Um, but, you know, he brings so much more to the, the Celtic team than, than goals as well. You know, he, he links the play between the, the you know, Anthony Stokes there and, you mm -hmm. know, he plays the ball through and, and gets on the end of it like, you know, all good strikers do. Um, you know, it's... He's such a valuable you know, player. When, when you see the, the, the ball through as well, it's a, it's a great ball and then he's, he's managed to fall. And I think maybe the goalkeeper should do a bit better, but, um, you know, he's, he's followed in and he's... he's got his goal from, from a scrap again. Yeah, you know, we, you know, we've heard him this week talking about, you know, he wants to stay on at Celtic and I'm pretty sure that Celtic will be desperate to keep him as well. He's a guy, that, you know, in the top end of the pitch that you look for people to have an end product and mm -hmm. he's certainly got that. He'll either, you know, set people up like there with uh, with Stokes, great way to pass, splits the defence open, but he also pitches in with a lot of goals and that's what you want. You want somebody with an end product and he's got that in abundance. Absolutely. It was 2-0 to Celtic midway through the second half, Chris, and a great chance for James McFadden if this goes in, then it, it does become a different game, but he, he fluffed his lines, didn't he? Yeah, but I think the, the ball should probably, Keith Lazar should probably pass it to him there first of all. Um, yeah. You know, and I think, you know, I'm almost thinking that for, for, for James there. I think he knows <laughs> himself, he, sh he should finish it, but sure. you know, I think he's probably expecting the ball from Keith Lazar straight away and he can get it out of his feet and get a shot away. Um, you know, and, and it comes at him pretty fast there as well, but, 
you know, the goalkeepers made themselves big and made a good save, though. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, sending off in this match, Anthony Stokes. Um, <laughs> let's have a look at it because it was a fairly clear sending off. Uh, Celtic were well in command of the match at this point as well, Michael. And uh, I think the funny thing is, Anthony Stokes, the picture of innocence after that. Well, he was very surprised <laughs> that he'd picked up the red card, but um, I think, you know, he, Anthony Stokes must have been the only person there that uh, wasn't expecting that. You know, it's, there's no doubt that was a, it was a red card. Um, which is a bit silly, you know, late in the game, uh, you know, winning 3 0 at the time to, to do something like that. But, uh, you know, I think there was maybe the previous from uh, from Lasley's tackle on uh, Adam Matthews, I think, is what's, uh, you know, initiated it in the first place. Yeah, he's a bit of a pantomime villain, Keith yes. Lasley at Celtic Park, <laughs> that's for sure. How do you see Motherwell in the equation for a second spot in the Premiership in the final equation, Chris? Well, I've definitely got um, good experienced players there, and I think they'll, they'll push Aberdeen all the way. Um, you know, it will be an exciting end to the season between the two of them. Um, you know, I fancy it'll be one of, one of the two of them um, that'll get it. Um, you know, I think Aberdeen, they could probably do me someday to score goals because they dominate a lot of games, but scraping over the line. Um, but, you know, I fancy Mother have got goals in them. Um, you know, it, it will be close. OK, well, back to the fun and games down at the bottom of the Premiership table now. Patrick Thistle had squandered the chance to get the first home league win of the season last weekend when they let a 3-1 lead over Ross County slip away. New signing from St Mirren, Lee Mayer, went straight into the starting lineup. Paul Gallagher also there in for the injured Scott Fox. Thistle with another chance to get that home victory yesterday, this time against Chris Boyd's Kilmarnock. Chris Johnston also found a place in the starting lineup, and so too did young Robbie Muirhead. With the story of the match at Fair Hill, here's Brian McLaughlin. Thistle were given the perfect start after just three minutes. Callum Higginbotham with the acrobatic overhead kick that eluded Craig Sampson, the ball ending up in the back of the net. Killy defence failing to clear, the 24-year-old getting his effort on target, although Craig Sampson may feel he could have done better. Higginbotham had a chance to increase Thistle's advantage. No offside flag, the 24-year-old though blasted over. Samson redeemed himself in the second half, a fine save low to his left-hand side from Taylor Sinclair. Slowly but surely, Kilmarnock began to edge their way into the game. The home defence failing to clear, Chris Boyd's chance on this occasion though, drifting wide of goal. Alan Archibald's side were looking for their elusive second goal to kill the game off and they came close when Stuart Bannigan dispossessed Jackson Irvin. His cross met by Stevie Lawless. Again though, Sampson denied the Jags. Gary Fraser was next to try his luck, his shot straight at the keeper. Kilmarnock were struggling to find their way past the home defence. William Gross linked up with Chris Boyd. Clean through and goal. Gallagher with the save, Gross with the rebound, Balatoni with the header off the line. Lee Ashcroft was next to have a crack at goal, his header though tipped over by Gallagher. With 90 minutes on the clock, there was one final chance for Kilmarnock. A long ball by Craig Sampson, eventually finding its way through to William Gross. As he bore down in goal, Taylor Sinclair came across him. No doubt in the mind of referee Stephen McLean, a straight red card shown to the defender, as Gross had a clear goal-scoring opportunity. Chris Boyd with the chance to make it 13 for the season. His shot saved though by Gallagher, but Robbie Muirhead was in hand to knock the rebound into the back of the net to snatch a point for Kilmarnock with almost the last kick of the game. Overall, I think it was a fair result. We had chances, they had chances. Uh, they were probably better the first half and we were better second half. Because if you play as well as that, um, you've got to go and win games. And it's been happening all year, um, not playing, playing too well and not winning matches. Well, it looked for a time that Party Fissel might be on track for the first home league win of the season after Callum Higginbotham's spectacular overhead <laughs> kick. Less said about the goalkeeping from Craig Sampson, the better, probably. And it was going well for Partick Thistle at that point, but they couldn't hold on, of course, and they are still without a home league win this season. Let's have a look at the statistics, the unfortunate statistics from a Partick Thistle point of view. 11 home games now in the league this season and not a single victory there. And, Michael, I guess that is why we see them at second bottom place in the Premiership. Yeah, of course, you know, it's uh, you need to have a, a good home record if you're going to have a successful season. And what makes it all the more ironic is the fact that the, they had such a great record at home 
uh, last year when they, they won the, the first division. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's a number of those games and you see the results, though, that they've, they've been leading, you know, late in games. I remember the Hearts game early in the season, they were 1-0 up late on and uh, last week against County and obviously against Chris's Kilmarnock yesterday. And when you get a lot of games like that, that really affects the confidence. When you're almost there and you constantly lose late goals and lose points, it's going to have an effect on the confidence. Almost a psychological impact. Well, it does. It certainly yeah. gets to that stage now, especially when they're playing so well as well. You know, there have been a lot of plaudits with the good football they play, but you need to see games out as well. Dramatic uh, conclusion to the match. Chris, you're at the centre of things. Well, thanks to him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the action. Uh, no doubts about the penalty decision in this case. No, it's a stonewall penalty. Um, you know, I, th I think... You know, Wally finds himself in a position it causes problems from, for the left back. I think he should probably have tucked in a lot um, better than what he what did. What happens but here? It's a great save. <laughs> <laughs> I think Robbie's followed it up and you know, I told him I'd get him a goal. So he's, he's managed to follow it up and put it away. But it's a great finish. He's kept his composure um, and, and got the ball in the, the back of the net. So it's, it was a big result for us and end up. He even had the good grace to pretend to celebrate the goal as well, Chris. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you know, it was, it, it followed it up well. It's a great finish. I mean, especially after the start we had as well. Sure. Um, after three minutes, and you know, Craig Sampson put his, his hands up in the dressing room after it. But you know, he's, he's actually been, you know, a, a player of the year so far, and um, you know, it's, it was a disappointing start, but to come back, it's, it's a great point for us. You scored plenty of goals this season. Any offers on the table this January window? <laughs> no, not as yet. <laughs> not as yet. Okay, <laughs> you're not telling us that's for sure. Yeah, bad day at the office for Aberdeen. Great day for Danny Williams, though, uh, Chris. At one point, he was playing in the eighth tier of English football, Kendall Town. Uh, yesterday, he got the decisive goal and a great hit as well, wasn't it? Yeah, he finds himself in a great position there, off the off the back of the the, the left back in the centre half, and you know he takes a great first touch to get it out of his feet, and you know it's an unbelievable second um, touch in the back of the net. Absolutely, and. Michael, I guess this is what Inverness have been doing for so long under Terry Butcher, finding these waifs and strays from well all over British football and bringing them into the side. Yeah, he's certainly you know they made a name for themselves of you know finding these guys down the, the, the lower divisions in, in England. But you see there are you know a lot of good passages of uh, pass and play, which is you know you heard John Hughes talking about that. They're working on it and training. It's now coming to the fore, and I think you see throughout the, the clips there there was a, quite a few of them and. He's clearly, Danny Williams is going to be somebody that will benefit from that because, you know, he's an attacking winger who John Hughes will look to get lots of the ball and, and uh, you know, continue the good form that uh, he showed in that game there against Aberdeen. Yeah, how do you assess the John Hughes impact so far, Chris? Because that was only, only a second win since coming in for Terry Butcher. Yeah, it's, it's been difficult when, you know, Inver usually when, when a team loses their manager, um, it's because they're, they're getting bad results. But, you know, Inverness were up the, the top challenge. It was always going to be a, a difficult job for somebody to come in. But, you know, you can see there with some of the passes of play that Inverness have had that, you know, maybe John Hughes's um, philosophy is getting a, a, across. Um, you know, quick. Um, you know, and, and I hope he does because you know he's. I've came across him a few times. He's, he's a good guy, one of the good guys in, in football. And um, you, you just hope that um, they, they keep progressing the way that um, they, they did under Terry Butcher. Still contenders for second spot, in your opinion? No. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Okay. What about you, Michael? You've always backed Aberdeen. They lost yesterday. You still going with them? Yeah, I think it'll come down to you know a, a battle between uh, with, uh, between Aberdeen and Motherwell. You know they're the, they're the two teams. I thought Dungeon United would have been there or thereabouts, but th you know that run that they're on is an extended run now that they've drifted away. And I think that Aberdeen and Motherwell, the two strongest teams in the league, and um, you know I think if I was to sort of plump for one of them, I would go for for Aberdeen to get that second spot in the league. So just a blip from Derek McKenna's side yesterday. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. Uh, you know, it was a. He said it there. It was a bad day at the office. I think that that's what it was. They'll get that second position in the league. Thanks very much, guys.